Hey guys, it's field trip day. We're going to my two favorite stores to get the supplies that we need for rock painting. Let's go check it out. Let's try Joanne's first. Okay guys, so this is typically the aisle I come to for um, when I'm choosing my paints. Um, I don't really have a particular brand that I lean more towards. Um, it's just if I find the right color that I'm looking for. So the average price is about $1.49 per um, little bottle. I highly recommend that you get the large bottle of white and a large bottle of black because what we'll do is we'll use that to make highlights and shadows from your base color. So um, the large cut, the large black are down here and they run about three dollars okay if you're just starting out highly recommend that you get um, a multi pack of um, brushes that have a variety of shapes and sizes I typically though and those are um, about $7.99 to start um, the one that I lean toward most are the are this size brush um, which is the that size and then they're out actually of the blue version of it but that those are the ones that I typically use for um, most of my detail brushes when we're doing rocks because rocks are so small you're gonna end up using a lot of little ones that I replace them quite often too um, probably every I would say every five or six rocks I'll replace because you want you don't want them to be frayed or anything you want it to be super um, sharp and crisp so um, that's the kind of brushes also if you look down here metallic is paints are in style too and they've got a great variety of metallic paints and colors too which is what I really like a lot when using when painting this is the sealant that I use um, I know that there's a variety out there and people swear by the their particular choice but um, the Mod Podge right here, the matte finish, is typically what I use to um, coat my my rocks, and it's $10.99. All right, here's another um, thing that I like to use too, is I like to use these little um, screw-on cap little cups for when I mix my paint, and then I know I'm going to walk away and come back later. I don't want it to dry out, especially if it's a mixed color, so I'll use these, um, and that's $7.99. And it's a very worthwhile investment, um, definitely, for um, if you know, you know that you're going to come back and forth with painting your rocks. Here is um, dust cover paper. It's typically what I use when um, I, as my base for covering the, my surface that where I'm about to paint. Um, and that's $3.49, and it lasts a long time. It will go for a while. <laughs> All right, that's our supplies at Joann's. Let's head over to Lowe's and look at the rocks. All right, so this is typically the stones that I choose. It's about a good size if you are using them to, to paint and then take them into the theme parks. Um, they're really particular on how many you bring in and of the size. Like down here, for example, if you are you know, doing them and hiding them outside of secure areas like in parks and things like that in your painting for a particular reason, those big ones are just beautiful, which I'm tempted to get them. Um, this go around but I usually stick with about this size and um, I go with the white ones now there's a difference between rocks and the the black ones or the dark gray ones work just as good but you want to avoid rocks that are super porous or that have a lot of holes in them because what happens is your lines can't you won't get the straight line the curve of the line that you want you, you want that nice solid smooth rock surface um, also you want to look for rocks that are um, funky shaped you don't always want to get just the you know the pretty rounds you know ovals or anything like that a lot of times I draw inspiration for the image that I choose to paint on the rock based on the rock shape and um, I'll show you two examples of that and we'll insert it right here the Hello Kitty rock and Jaws Hello Kitty and Jaws it's kind of this rock 
is shaped like a shark's tooth. So that's kind of, that's where I drew the information or drew the inspiration for that rock. And then figment, figment is pear shaped, so I chose a pear shaped rock for um, for his for his painting. All right, so that'll do it at Lowe's. Showed you the rocks and the types that we typically use. Um, we'll go home now, and I'll show you how I organize all the painting uh, or all the paint supplies and um, all the prep work before we put our image on the rock. So let's head home. And we've made it back home. So now what I want to do is show you all the supplies and the prep work that I do before I start to paint the rocks. All right, so just to show you really quickly how I have everything organized for ease of finding things and ease of cleaning up. Um, I use a giant, like almost a milk crate, um, I guess is what you could call it. So I use a milk crate to um, hold all my paints and my brushes. I put, I use mason jars where all my brushes are in. Um, and I have a cup that holds all my paint pens and um, I've got my Mod Podge in there. So, so I use it for um, easy storage, easy retrieval and easy cleanup. Okay, let me show you some other things over here that, um, that I would recommend as well. Okay, so the other things that I also recommend, um, we use the brown paper for the painting area, but then I recommend using tin foil for putting the actual paints on. Um, it, this doesn't leak, but it has a tendency to um, absorb some of the, the moisture from the paint, so I typically use tin foil to hold my paint colors. Um, I've got my little bucket of water, and then, um, of course, I've got my granny glasses to help me see, and I have my lamp for extra lighting. And like we discussed earlier, you wanna find rocks that are you know, funky or weird shaped. Like in this case, my Jaws and Hello Kitty, I felt like, or I got my inspiration from the shape of the rock. It looks like a shark's tooth to me. Um, another one is the Baby Spider-Man. With the Baby Spider-Man, I knew that it was going to be more long than wide, so I used the, a longer shape rock. Same thing with Popeye. I knew that Popeye, I wanted to show the crest or the curve of the wave, so I used a rock that had a nice flat side at one and then curved kind of in a neat way in another. And here down here is um, Poseidon's Fury, which is the next rock I'll be working on. And that one, I felt like, because it was based on a stone-shaped uh, statue outside of Universal, uh, a really funky, weird kind of shaped rock would be kind of neat for that as well. Thanks for watching part one of our three-part series. See you next time.